hello, my name is NJ Polly. I'm a blacksmith and own a little business called Cody Ironworks here in Cody, Wyoming. I've been a, I hit my uh, first hot horseshoe uh, in farrier school in 1989. I was a professional farrier and horse trainer for 23 years. Uh, and I've been blacksmithing, of course, every since the first day that we started um, then in hot horseshoes in Ferrier School. I've worked on do dozens of anvils, and we're going to walk around the shop a little bit, and I'm going to show you what I have now and um, why what Daniel Moss says says. Um, sorry for the, there's no editing. Uh, I've been spending 30 years blacksmithing and not learning how to run a computer. So, for many years, I used something like this to shoe horses with. This is a smaller anvil than the last one I had. I think this is a, this is probably a 70. That's a cast steel anvil. I think they advertise them as H13 uh, on a steel stand. Um, shot a lot of horses on something close to this. I always preferred a three-legged stand versus something like this. This was this stand was made by a buddy of mine when I moved into this shop last uh, spring because uh, we wanted to get the anvils up off the ground and be able to use them. But I have forged a lot uh, on one of these anvils. I'd rather use this when I'm doing my demonstrations and stuff. Uh, just because it's easier to move around. Uh, I do a lot of demonstrations on either the back of my flatbed trailer or the truck, and this works pretty good, but it bounces around. That energy runs right down through that thing, and it chatters around. Um, what I find helps is putting it on a, a rubber stall mat. That um, You lose a little of the energy, but for doing the light stuff that we do during um, demonstrations, it works pretty good. This is an anvil I got on trade a while back. It's a smaller, little different version than this 70. I think it's probably a 50-pounder or 55-pounder. I hate this anvil. The guy who built it clearly wasn't an, a blacksmith and didn't know that stacking the blocks in a horizontal position makes that sucker bounce around like you're on a, a trampoline. I hate it. Um, now, you could gain more mass by wrapping a 16-foot piece of chain around that son of a gun, and it would help, but you still, because of the way that the, the, the grain is run on that anvil stand, even if you put it on the rubber mat, that son of a gun bounces around terribly. Uh, at some point, we'll probably replace it. I've left it the way it is because I want people to understand when they come into the shop, they get to use that anvil, and they get to chase it around a little bit, and then I let them use this other anvil that I'm leaning against, this one, and they get to see that they don't have to chase that one around as much. And then I let them come over here and forge on this one. So I think this is a hay button. Uh, I'm pretty sure it weighs 250 pounds. Now you can notice that this was just made out of old scrap pieces of 2 by 10 stacked up, the, uh, uh, but they're on end. They're laid vertically and it makes a huge difference. Um, I love these hay button anvils. This is the third one I've had. The face on this anvil was almost absolutely destroyed when I got it. I have a really good pipe fitter, pipe fitter friend of mine who uh, absolutely rebuilt the face of this anvil, and this is my everyday anvil. Now, I've got this sitting on a piece of dunnage because I wanted to make this so it was tall and short, so if I got shorter stu students in here, or if I was doing striking um, 
using top tools and striking, I could lower this anvil about four inches um, to make it easier for, you know, drifting and stuff. This is the biggest anvil in this pattern that I've ever owned. Okay, but now I'm going to show the anvil that I've been forging on since 1991 or 92. I can't rem exactly remember when I got it. So this is another hay button. This one belongs to my grandfather. I know it was made in about 1915 or 16. This one was made in 1905. I can tell by the serial numbers on the front of them. This anvil is marked as 80, as 98 pounds. Um, I've done probably 80% of all the forging I've done in the last 30 years on this little 100 pound anvil. As you can see, it's mounted on a piece of glue lamb that is mounted on another piece of glue lamb. And in all those years of forging, this, I think, was the very best setup I ever had. Now, you notice I don't have chain around it. I used a piece of uh, cable and a boomer to wrap that down. I wanted to make it so I could take it off because at one time it was the only anvil I had. Um, this is a great setup. So I've got uh, two big vices mounted to this block, um, and then I've got a forge on a, on a ro rolling arm like you would have in the back of a pickup. This actually did, was at one time mounted on my farrier truck um, so I could swing that out. This anvil sings and I've forged everything from five pound hammers to I don't know how many horseshoes on this on this anvil and I absolutely love it. Um, so now we're going to go to an anvil that maybe a lot of you guys have never seen before. This is called a bridge anvil. A lot of people call them an uh, oil field anvil. This anvil, the anvil alone, I think probably weighs 350 pounds. It's a cast iron anvil. It was made by National Supply Company. Um, it's on this huge, heavy, walled tubing stand. I bet the stand probably weighs 30 or 40 pounds. So that's about almost 400 pounds of mass there. Um, I hate forging on this on this anvil. It's like it's like trying to it's like trying to forge on a donut. It's squishy. This has become my go-to anvil just because the face is so big and it's so massive and I can move it around so when I'm doing filming for my TikToks and a lot of these videos um, I can you know I can move it around in the shop it works out really good but I still for all a lot of the small stuff I still go to this setup this is my basic setup but this anvil um, you can see it gets used in the shop I actually set up a treadle hammer which is incredibly efficient on this anvil and you notice that I don't hit the face of this mushy anvil with um, with this 16 pound sledgehammer. I actually have this piece of steel that is, I think it's three by four, uh, and a piece of uh, tool steel on top of it, just welded onto the top of it. And this is actually, so this is actually, I do a lot of the repasse, I do a lot of the light flattening and stuff underneath this hammer. I don't know how I got along without it for 30 years, actually, to tell you the truth. Well, I never had a designated anvil in a place as good as I do here to be able to set this up. Works really good. Um, do I forge on this anvil? Yeah, occasionally I forge on it when I'm, you know, working right here. But as far as doing the majority of my forging, man, I hate this thing. And it's a cast iron anvil. It doesn't have a hardened face on it. Um, uh... Mass, there's something to be said for mass, but I'll tell you what, if it's just, if you're just going by mass, this anvil has probably 150 pounds on this anvil, and it has 300 pounds on this anvil. And I would rather forge on this hay button, which is a forged steel anvil, or maybe forged iron, 
I don't know for sure, um, with a hardened face on it than I would on this. A lot of it has to do with the way they were mounted. So part of the reason this has a rubber mat underneath it is because this son of a gun was bucking around. As I was hitting this on this metal stand, even with all that mass, and there's a piece of I-beam there. I mean, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of bump on that. But um, it, was, it was trotting around on me. So I put the rubber mat underneath it, and that absolutely alleviated it. It hasn't moved an inch since I rolled this uh, on there about two months, I think. I've been using this setup for about two months. So a lot of it has to do, it isn't all about the mass of the anvil. This anvil is a tiny anvil, you know, compared to this or this. But I would much rather forge, I'd much rather forge on this. I'd actually rather forge, I'd actually rather forge than forge on that. I'd rather forge on this piece of dropped steel. I'd rather chain that down to a good post and forge on that drop than forge on this to do very much forging on this on this cast iron anvil. This is a this is an arm killer. This cast iron anvil is an arm killer. I bet you I and I'm just guessing, but I bet you have to take 20% more swings to do the same amount of work on that anvil as I would that one or that one. And I'd much rather use this drop for doing very much forging than this. I mean, it's nice because it's got a big fat face on it, and you're, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing sp specific work, I think it's fine. But it's not the kind of anvil that I would want to use every day. And just as a, just to show, as so you can kind of understand what's going on here, this, and this is a trip hammer that I'm building. We're just getting this put together. That part of the mess in the shop. We're really trying to get some stuff put together here. Just this piece of steel. So this is two inches thick and it's nine, I think it's nine and three quarters or nine and a half inches across. Just this piece of steel weighs 45 pounds. So um, a lot of it, I bet I, over 50% of it has less to do with the anvil and more to do how you've got your anvil mounted. Um, I definitely recommend if you're going to mount your anvil, Mount it on blocks vertically, like this or like that. Uh, if you're gonna mount your block on a stand, three legs is better. You're never, no matter how flat your concrete floor is, you're never gonna get that anvil to sit level. It's gonna roll around. It's gonna bounce. It's gonna, no matter what. You're gonna get mill skill underneath the feet of it, and it's gonna, it, it's gonna, it's gonna mess with you. Um, three legs is better. If you want to dampen some of that weight, use pipe and fill your pipe, fill your pipe legs with sand. That'll dampen a lot of the noise and it will take a lot of that vibration out. Okay. Everybody, I guess that's it. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can comment or find me on the Googler. It's NJ Polly, P A W L E Y. Um, oh, or you can just message me here. I, 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 I'm an avid YouTuber, so I, uh, and I have some content that's very old on here, so I can kind of, nobody sees it, but I've got some content on here, which kind of proves that I've been doing this for a long time. Thanks, everybody.